So in this video, I'm going to do two related rates questions. Uh, one, and they're both from Stuart. Um, one is about uh, finding some information about a triangle that is growing tall and how the rate at which the height increases affects the, the rate at which the base has to change if there are certain restrictions on the area. And I'm also going to do this problem with uh, the rocket, uh, which is a little bit harder. And since it's so long, let's just read it when we get to it. I'm going to do the other one first. All right. Um, <clears throat> so this one says, the altitude of a triangle is increasing at a rate of one centimeter per minute, while the area of the triangle is increasing at a rate of um, two centimeters squared per minute. At what rate is the base of the triangle changing when the altitude is 10 centimeters and the area is 100 centimeters squared? So sorry for using two different notations for exponent. So let's draw a picture and try to get an idea for what's going on here. Um, so we just need to draw some kind of triangle. So here's a, a triangle. Maybe I make this a little bit thicker for now. And um, so it's like this. and the triangle has some height, okay, so we need to label that. By the way, just drawing this diagram is solving the problem, right? We've already started solving the problem. You have to draw a picture to do these things or it's it's not going to be, uh, you're not going to succeed. So what's going on is that the, the height of the triangle is moving up, you know, kind of think that it's, it's increasing the, and also we have some statement about how the area is changing. So it says the altitude is going up at a rate of one centimeter per minute, and then it also tells you how the area of the triangle is changing. And so when you determine those two things, then the base um, the base is going to be affected by those restrictions. You, if you just leave the base alone and let the height go up, then you're not going to have any control over the area. So since the area is controlled, um, the base has to change. So the question is asking you, how is the base changing? at this certain instant in time as this process is going on. All right, um, so that's sort of what's happening. Now we're going to, uh, and let's let's think about what we actually want to know. Um, we want to know B, uh, B prime. <laughs> it's asking uh, at what rate is the base of the triangle changing when the altitude is 10 centimeters? So B prime here is notation for the way B is changing with time. So all of these quantities, because we're thinking about this sort of dynamic physical situation, all of these quantities are really functions of time. They're changing in time. So we can take their derivative with respect to t and see how they're changing in time. So this is what we want to know. And uh, so we also have some other information. And so the way you start the related rates question is always just writing down some equation that relates all the quantities that you're interested in. And so the one that's most natural here is that area is equal to uh, one half base times height. Okay. Now once you uh, once you have the equation, you take d dt of both sides and just and just pray, just hope for the best. I hope we make it. Um, so take ddt of both sides, and just as the notation, the primes are always going to be derivatives with respect to time. So I've already said that b prime is db dt, a prime is uh, da dt, and h prime is going to stand for the way h is changing with time. So dh dt. All right, so this is pretty easy. Um, derivative to take, you have to use the product rule. So the derivative here is a prime is equal to one half b prime h plus one half b h prime. Okay, all right. So this is sort of like stage two of any related rates question. Stage one is writing down the equation. Stage two is taking ddt of both sides. And now um, stage three is you can plug in you can, you know, we're interested in b prime, so at some point we're going to be solving this equation for b prime. Um, but I find that people have an easier time understanding it if we plug in before we solve. Um, and just 
sometimes people try to plug in before you take the derivative. Don't do that. You can't plug in until after you take the derivative. But now let's see how many of these things that we how many of these things we already know. Um, so what is this saying? The altitude is increasing at a rate of uh, blah blah blah. So the rate at which the altitude is increasing is h prime. So that sentence is telling us that h prime is equal to one. And they say the area is increasing at a rate of two. So that's telling us the way area is changing in time. It's telling us that a prime is two. And um, so they give us some other information. We are going to be concerned with the instant at which h is equal to 10 and a is equal to 100. Okay, so I'm going to try to take this information with me down to the other part of the problem. And you can just drag it, kind of limp down there. All right, um, so great. So I have this, and now I can maybe rewrite this equation with some, some hopefully everything except for b prime replaced with an actual number. So let me just start plugging in here. So a prime is really 2. And this is 1 half. b prime is what we're going to solve for. h is 10. Uh, 1 half. b, OK, we can't do anything with b yet because it's not there. But we know that h prime is 1. OK, so times 1 is itself. Now, we really do know what b is because a uh, b and h are all related by the equation a equals 1 half bh. So we have to solve for this guy so that everything except for b prime is a number. We can do that because of these two pieces of information. So 100 is equal to 1 half b times 10. Um, so that means that b is equal to 20. So that's not exactly rocket science. I think you can figure that out on your own. All right, and so this guy is 20. And I'm going to be really lazy and copy this and paste it again. OK, and I'm just going to erase B and put 20 in there. OK, so times 20. And now we just solve for B prime and we're done. See, B prime is the only thing that we don't know. So this is saying that 2 is equal to 5 B prime uh, plus 10. So that means minus 8 is equal to 5 B prime. And this means that B prime is equal to minus 8 over 5. And sometimes, we, you know, it's kind of freaky that we got a negative answer, but that's fine. And what it means is that under these conditions, for all these things to be true, at that instance, the base has to be getting smaller. It has to be shrinking to satisfy these assumptions about how area and height are changing. Now, let's go down and do the, the rocket question. So it has kind of a long buildup. So a television camera is positioned 4,000 feet from the base of a rocket launching pad. The angle of elevation of the camera has to change at the correct rate in order to keep the rocket in sight. Also, the mechanism for focusing the camera has to take into account the increasing distance from the camera to the rising rocket. Let's assume that the rocket rises vertically and its speed is 6, 000, or sorry, 600 feet per second when it's risen 3,000 feet. And they have these two questions here, and the, these deal with those, those two problems that were mentioned earlier. So the angle of elevation of the camera has to change, blah, blah, blah. So that's what, uh, that's what B is talking about. If the television camera is always kept aimed at the rocket, how fast is the camera's angle of elevation changing at the same moment? So the moment that they're talking about is when the rocket is 3,000 feet high. And the other problem is that you have to know the distance to the rocket so that you can focus the camera correctly. And that's what A is asking about. It says, how fast is the distance from the television camera to the rocket changing at this moment when the rocket is 3,000 feet high? So these are two totally separate problems, really. So let's do A first. Um, and drawing a picture is solving the problem. And I know that, you know, in a couple of weeks, or I guess one week when we have an exam on this, I'm going to look at exam papers on the related rates question 
and I'm going to see complete nonsense in, on about 80% of your papers. I hate to tell you that, but it's true. But the thing that's really going to make me cry is that there's not going to be any diagram. And you can't solve the damn problem without a diagram. So if you don't even draw a diagram, I really don't know what you're even thinking. You've got to draw this diagram, okay? Here's the rocket. Uh, the rocket is going up. Here's some exhaust or something. I have to be careful because I don't want to do anything that looks obscene. So there's the rocket. Here's this little vapor trail. The angle is here, but we're not going to be worried that, about that until part B. What we care about in part A is the distance. Um, okay, um, so just labeling the side is solving the problem, right? And what is this side? This side is 4,000 because we're told that it's 4,000 feet. And it's tempting to write 3,000 here, but don't do that. Just say H. Um, so don't plug in until after we've taken the derivative of something. All right, um, so now that you have the diagram, we need an equation that describes the situation um, or just relates all the variables. And so the obvious thing to use here is the Pythagorean theorem, which says that d squared is equal to 4,000 uh, squared plus h squared. And great, OK? So now that you have this thing, like we did in the previous problem, you just whack both sides with d, d, t. And so some primes are going to pop out, and we're just going to hope for the best. By the way, the thing that we're looking for here is d prime, right? A is asking, what is d prime? So if you need a reason, why would you ever need a reason to take the derivative? It's just always the best thing to do. But if you do need a reason, it's because we're trying to find d prime. So let me take the derivative of both sides. So 2d times d prime by the chain rule. That's because d is not the variable, t is the variable. And here, 4,000 just dies. And you get 2h times h prime. OK. So now is, the, now is the time when we can plug in if we want to. Um, let's see if some things are probably just given. We know that the, at this instance, the instant that we care about, the, the speed is 600. So that's telling us h prime. So that's saying that h prime is equal to 600. And we also, they're also telling us that we, the instant that we care about is when the height is 3,000. So we know that h is 3,000. And they don't tell us d, but we can figure out d. You know, if the height is, is 3,000, then d has to be equal to um, the square root of 4,000 squared plus 3,000 squared. And so let's actually figure out what that is. So we want square root. What the hell is going on here? Uh, not sign. Oh man, it, when you write s, it does sign. Don't write s. Square root of uh, what did I say? Four thousand squared plus three thousand squared, and that is five thousand. Oh, thank you, James Stewart. So. That means d is equal to 5,000. OK. OK, so now we have most of these things in this equation. So 2 times 5,000 is 10,000. And you've got d prime hanging out. It's the only thing we don't know now. Um, 2 times 3,000 is uh, 6,000. So we've got 6,000 times 600. And so finally, the answer to part A is d prime is equal to 6,000 times 600 divided by 10,000. And I feel kind of silly here. For I can't use a calculator and still respect myself. So let's just knock off some zeros. So there go three zeros. And here's one more zero left to go. So this is six, really six times 60. And six times 60 is 360. And so that must be d prime. That is d prime. OK. Um, so now let's talk about uh, part B. We finished part A. And uh, my cursor, where is it? I move this stuff down. We're going to write a lot of it over again. 
Um, the reason I'm getting rid of it is because now that we're talking about an angle, it's going to be a different formula. Sorry for this. Okay. All right. So for part B, it says, if the television camera is always kept aiming at the rocket, how fast is the camera's angle of elevation changing at the moment uh, when the height is 3,000? So here's the triangle again. Should really be the same triangle as before. Uh, how about this? Okay, so that's good. So here's the rocket. And here's the angle. And here's H. Don't write 3000. No plugging in until after you take the derivative of something. And great. Um, so actually here is, here is D also. Oh wow, so maybe A is going to tie into B. Maybe I should do these problems before I start making long videos about them. Because, okay, so that's going to come in because the most obvious equation now to relate, uh, we just need some equation that involves theta, really, because this is asking how fast is the camera's angle changing, and so that's asking what is theta prime, and theta prime is really just shorthand for the derivative of theta with respect to time. So like everything else, theta is, is secretly a function of time. We're all secretly functions of time. Um, okay, so let's write the equation that relates these things. And so we're just doing SOHCAHTOA here. Sine of theta is equal to um, opposite over hypotenuse is h over d. Okay. And um, so now take d dt of both sides and hope and pray. And so what happens now is you get cosine of theta times theta prime, don't forget your theta prime, is equal to quotient rule time h prime d minus h d prime all over d squared. Okay, and uh, now it's time to plug in. And I think, you know, last time didn't we say that under the situation, under the situation at the same, at this instant that we care about d is 5,000. Remember we did the calculator and it told us 5,000. And h is supposed to be equal to 3,000. And h prime is equal to uh, 600, right? 600, I do that right? 600 feet per second, good. And I think we know everything. And we even found d prime. d prime is equal to 360. We found that in part A. Uh, oh, one thing we don't know is uh, theta. But it's not hard to find theta because we have this equation. So if this equation is true, then what does theta have to be? Let's see. Need some space. So move this down. Go down. Um, Okay, so say, uh, sine theta is equal to h, which is 3,000, divided by d, which is 5,000. And so this is uh, 3 over 5. This means that uh, theta is equal to inverse sine. There's several ways to do this part. Okay, so I know some of you are still really uncomfortable with the inverse trig functions, but look, you've got this equals that. This is why inverse sine exists, so you can crack this nut open and get the, the meat out. So we need to know what um, arc sine of three-fifths is. So let's try Google. What is a sine of three-fifths? I hope it speaks my language. Okay, yeah, it does. So this is um, 0.6435. Help me remember that, okay? 0 0.6435. 0 0.6435. All right, and now we we know everything. And uh, actually, we up here you can see that we want to at some point find cosine of that. So maybe we should just do that right now. Um, so I'll just apply cosine to this, and I know that this simplifies into something, but there's 0.8, all right? Once again, um, we're seeing why that the textbook costs $3,000 because of these little conveniences. So this turns out to be equal to 0.8. Remember, theta prime is what we're trying to solve for. Okay. 
So now we're ready to actually solve for uh, theta prime. So let's go. So we've got 0.8 times theta prime is equal to h prime is 600, uh, d is 5,000, minus h is 3,000, uh, d prime is 360, and this is all over d squared, so that is 5,000 squared. And okay, so I'm since I have a since this is a computer, I'm going to cheat a little bit. This is really 8 over 10. So if I multiply both sides by 10 over 8, it'll be the same thing. Okay, so now, now I need to go to the back computer. Let me kind of, maybe if I do this just right, I can look at the calculator and this thing at the same time. So the final answer Oh, you know what um, Bill Gates is really dumb for is there's no there's no always on top command for Windows Windows and also no workspaces. What the hell is up with that? Why does Windows suck so bad? So I know I'm using Windows, but that's only because I have a dual band router that doesn't work with Linux. Uh, so if you're watching this and you're not using Linux already, you should upgrade to a real operating system. Okay, so there is the first part, and we need to do times 10 over 8, and we should be done. And the answer is, yikes, the answer is um, theta prime equals 0 0.096. And that's it. That's it. Okay. So satisfying. Great. End of the video.